Hey there guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock and it's a Thursday, which means it's time for a magic stuff. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about a topic that a lot of people have asked me to talk about, which is pocket management. Pocket management is so important. As a close-up performer, when you actually start to go out and do a paid gig, one of the things that you have to master is pocket management. Now, on a previous video, I actually talked about uh, set lists and I sort of talked about creating set lists and the importance of creating set lists. If you haven't watched that video, it might be a good idea to go and watch it because that's very important information that's useful to watch. But today I'm gonna to be talking about pocket management and we're gonna start off by talking about why pocket management is so important. Right, the reason pocket management is so important is because you can look so unprofessional when you go to a gig and you have no idea where anything is. Because what tends to happen when you, you know, a lot of people come into magic and they're a hobbyist, they're an amateur and that's fantastic and you perform magic for friends and you perform magic for colleagues and family and so on and so forth. But at some point you're going to want to be doing paid gigs. It might be that somebody's offered you a uh, you know, hey, can you do some magic at my private party? It might be that you work in a restaurant, whatever the case may be, you're gonna start doing paid gigs. And so what you do is you work yourself up into a bag of nerves because you know that you've gotta go out and you do the best job you can do. You're not really sure which tricks to do, so you end up just cramming as much stuff into your pocket as possible, which means that you end up losing everything. It's like, okay, well, let me show you a trick with this uh, uh, this pack of cards. Right, okay, so I'm gonna show, oh, hang on, sorry, that's the special. Let me, yeah, okay, pack of cards. Do you wanna give the cards a show? Very good. Now, let me just get a pen. Oh, that's a hot rod. Uh, I've got a pen. Now, you know what? We're not going to use a pen. Um, we're going to take out the four aces. Oh, this isn't a uh, one ace missing. Let's use the four. Do you see what I mean? It's just embarrassing. You want to look slick. When you're going out and you're performing for money, you owe it to that client to do the best possible job that you can do. And the important thing is to be organized. It's the same when you're on stage. When you're performing on stage, you need to know where all your props are. You need to know where everything is. You don't want to be walking back and forth on stage going, oh, I can't find this. It's the same with close up. So you don't want to come across as disorganized. Good pocket management will make you look so much slicker. I know where that is. Boom, whatever it may be. Okay, so. I'm gonna give you a series of tips right now, which is gonna help you master your pocket management. Let's start with tip number one. Okay, so the first tip is to create set lists. It's important to understand that you need to have set lists so that you're not just winging it when you go out there. You don't want to get yourself into a situation where you're going to a gig and you don't really know what you're doing. If you have clearly defined set lists for each type of environment, then you'll know what tricks you want to be taking with you. Okay, so uh, on a previous video, I talked about creating set lists. And I talked about the best way to create set lists. You really need to watch that video. Because if you don't watch that video, you're going to take everything that you own. And half of the stuff you aren't even going to use. So tip number one, I'm not going to talk about it here. Because I did a whole video on it. A whole half an hour video on it. But tip number one, create set lists. Tip number two. The second tip, and this is vitally important, don't try to jam too much stuff in your pockets. It's the cardinal sin, and it's the biggest mistake that I see magicians do. I can always tell a new magician at a gig, they look 15 stone bigger than they actually are because they've stuffed every single gimmick into their pockets that they can, and they can't find anything. And it's absolutely ridiculous. It's like, right, I've got four packs of cards in this pocket. I've got four packs of cards in this pocket. In this pocket, I've got this, this, this. Forget it, okay? Don't overstuff your pockets. First of all, you look stupid. And second of all, you'll never be able to find anything. And third of all, you'll be, you won't be able to pull it out. If your pockets are jam packed full of stuff, you're going you're gonna to be trying to pull it out and you're going to end up pulling the lining out and you're going to just look a disgrace, as simple as that. I'm sorry to put it so bluntly, but that's what's going to happen. And if you've got a pocket, you know, I see a lot of magicians with a right-hand pocket and they put a lot of loose stuff because a lot of tricks that you buy requires, okay, I'm going to have a remote control in there for my Magnet O. I'm going to have a remote control in there for my Timesmith watch. 
I'm going to have a remote control in there for my uh, dice routine, my mental dice routine. Oh, and I'll need the dice loose. I'm going to put that in there as well. Okay, so right. Okay, so let me perform this dice trick. I've got some dice. Um, there's two there. Let me see. Oh, no, that's a dice for another routine. Uh, let me, and then you get your dice out and it's like, right, okay, let me secretly get the remote control. Oh, um, that's the wrong remote control. I'm over-exaggerating, but you get the point. If your pockets are stuffed so full of stuff. I saw a guy once, right, and he had four wallets. He had four wallets, two in that pocket, two in that pocket. And he's like, yeah, I need four wallets. So this is my card's wallet. This is my doing. This is the Take one fucking wallet. <laughs> so, number one. Number two, do not stuff your pockets full of stuff. Number three, don't buy little close-up cases or uh, like harnesses and stuff that you put underneath your jacket. Now, trust me, I am talking as the voice of experience here. When I started going out uh, doing gigs, I was really worried. I wanted to take as much stuff as possible. And I bought myself this little red velvet case that opened up and there was stuff that you could put in there. And it's really cool, actually, because it was red velvet. It held quite a lot of stuff. But it also had an electromagnet in the center of it. And there was a little button you could press to switch it on. And what it did is uh, if you put a nut and a bolt on there and you press the button, it unraveled the nut and the bolt on top of the close-up pattern, which is quite cool. But I, I always forgot it. I put it down and I forgot it. And I, 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 I'd go to the next group and I'd go, right, okay. You know, and it'd be like two groups before I remembered I'd lost it. And I'm like, now looking around the venue, looking embarrassed because I can't find this case, which I want to find because it's got so much magic in it and it, it costs a fortune. Just don't. I also see people that want to take a chop cup around with them and they don't take a chop cup. Uh, there's no space in their pocket, so they carry the chop cup down. And they walk over to a table and they put the chop cup down and then they perform. They don't use the chop cup and then they pick it up and go to the next table. Don't do that either. If it doesn't fit in your pockets, don't take it with you. Because what's going to happen if you put that prop down and don't use it, people are going to feel disappointed that they didn't see what this thing was. And, uh, and a lot of the time, you'll leave it on the table, you'll forget that you've left it on the table, and you'll go back and people have fiddled around with it, and you might have lost a gimmick out of it or whatever. If it doesn't fit in your pockets, don't take it with you. You don't need to stuff extra stuff in your pockets. Just because I've told you not to overload your pockets doesn't mean that I've told you it's okay to get harnessed. And right, we'll, go, we'll have a load of gimmicks down this side, we'll have a load of gimmicks down this side. Okay, less is more. I think I'm getting my point across, hopefully, by now. Step number three, stop trying to take a bag into the venue with you so that you can change tricks halfway through. It is the sign of a consummate amateur. I have seen it before. I have seen people go to a gig and they've got a case full of magic, which is fine. I do that. I turn up at the gig. I've got nothing with me. I've got my case. I open up my case. I take the tricks out that I want to do and I leave the case either in the car or I'll leave it behind the DJ's table or whatever it may be. If I'm in a hotel, I might leave it behind the lobby. That's absolutely fine. But don't be the guy that takes the, te takes the case into the gig with them and goes, uh, yeah, I'm the magician. Um, is there anywhere I can keep this where I can get access to it? Because I'll probably need more tricks during the set. I actually, um, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't really be saying this, but I am. Um, once, my agency, slightly unusual, somebody asked me to source a magician for them, and we didn't have any magicians available. And I said, I can find somebody, but I can't guarantee the quality of this person. And they were like, no, no, it's fine. I said, just so you know, it's nothing to do with me. I'm just going to pass this person on to you, but they're not part of Slightly Unusual. And uh, I got a message afterwards going, that was the worst magician I've ever seen. Um, you know, we're not blaming you because you, you made us very clear it's got nothing to do with you. But my gosh, the magician was terrible. Um, he performed two tricks uh, and it was at wedding. <laughs> he performed two tricks at my wedding. And after performing the two tricks, one of which he got wrong, I asked him to perform some more magic. And he went, oh, OK, I'm going to have to go back to the car and get more tricks then. Like, genuinely, I've still got the email. So, you know, don't be that guy where you're relying on stuff that you haven't got with you and you're hoping, it just looks amateur, it's amateur hour. You know, it's, it's amateur hour, it's as simple as that. Please don't do that. Tip number four, take stuff that resets easily and quickly within a matter of seconds. You know, I knew this guy once and he was a good magician. Like he was a really good magician. He was engaging and he was, um, 
uh, really kind of charismatic and the magic he performed was really good but he had one big problem and I went to several gigs with this guy way back in the day I don't think he does magic anymore but his one big problem is every single trick he did took absolutely ages to reset so what he did is he used to go to the toilet in the venue that he was in and he used to take his trick out and he'd be in there for like five or six minutes resetting the trick before coming back out and then going up to another group and it wasn't that he was like wanting to uh, he wasn't being lazy it wasn't that he wanted to have a rest in between each set it was what he was resetting and he didn't have anything that reset instantly and I remember there was more than one gig where the client came over to me and said uh, can I ask a question? Is the, is the other magician okay? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Why? Um, we were worried he had like diarrhea or something because he keeps running to the toilet. I'm like, no, no, I'm sure he's fine. But it looks bad. And I think ultimately the thing you need to understand is it's the impression that the client has. You want to make sure that the client watches you and you're just working your ass off from start to finish, right? You don't want to be that, want to be that guy that looks like he's having a break every five minutes. It's why I don't do stuff that requires a heavy prep. So, for example, I'm going to give you an example right now. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I used to do Bill, not Bill, I used to do Cardin Orange and I'd prep a four stack and I'd have an intercessor and I'd have like five or six oranges and I'd, I'd put the orange, I'd put the card inside the orange. And what I'd do is I'd go to the gig and I'd take a bag of oranges and I'd ask to put them behind the bar. And in between each set, I'd, I'd go and I'd grab another orange. And I stopped doing it because it looked bad. It's the same with card two, uh, Kit Kat. You know, it's a great trick. Don't get me wrong. And maybe it's a one-off to the head table or something. It's fine. But I don't want to keep having to... First of all, I don't want to be sitting at home shoving cards in Kit Kats. And secondly... Not only do I not want to be sitting at home for hours shoving cards in Kit Kats, but I don't want to be going over in between each set. Take it now. There's a, if you're working a restaurant and you've been at that restaurant for years and you're wanting to do something extra special for their clients, I reckon that's okay. But it's a one-off gig where you're performing for a client or an agent, pardon me, a client or an agent or a, a wedding or something, and it's a one-off gig. You want to be looking like you're working really hard. You don't want to have to be resetting in between each set. So pick routines that reset quickly and easily. Right, the next tip that I'm going to give you is get yourself two pieces of paper, okay? And on one piece of paper, write jacket. And on the second piece of paper, write trousers, okay? Which I know sounds ridiculous, but there you go. And on your, on your trousers piece of paper, you're going to have four subheadings. Left, right, back left, back right. You can see where I'm going here, hopefully. And in your left hand, uh, in your other piece of paper on the jacket, you're going to have left, right, inside left, inside right, ticket, uh, top, whatever it may be. You might have a ticket pocket there. You might have a top pocket, whatever you've got, right? So you're going to have a whole bunch of, um, uh, you're going to have two pieces of paper and you're going to have all your pockets written down. Then what I want you to do is look at your set list. Of course, remember point number one, creating set lists. And um, what I want you to do is I want you to work out where every prop should go based on your set lists. So if you've got a set list that goes uh, extreme burn and then it goes uh, Rubik's Cube routine and it finishes off with ambitious card into card to wallet. Um, right. So that's a set list. That's three routines. So where's your extreme burn going to go? Is it going to go into the same wallet that you use for card to wallet? perfect or is it going to go into your top pocket or is it going to go somewhere else where's your Rubik's Cube going to go well realistically it has to go in either that pocket or that pocket where's your um you know where's your pack of cards going to go how many packs of cards are you going to take with you realistically only two take a regular deck of cards and one other now that might be a gimmick deck that might be a blank deck that might be a mem deck I don't know but realistically just take two packs of cards with you um, where's your Sharpie marker going to go? Think about every single aspect of that routine. So if I'm using a Sharpie marker, which I will be because I'm using Cards Wallet, where am I going to put the Sharpie marker? Am I going to put it there? Now, if I'm going to put it there, what about the extreme burn that's there? Is that going to affect the extreme burn? Yeah, it might be. Okay, so I'll put the, 
pen in the ticket pocket and I'll keep that for the extreme burn. Okay, that's really good. That works, yeah. And think it all through and work out where your props need to be. Now, ultimately, when you've been doing this for a while, you won't need to do that. It'll become instinct. And what I mean by that is what I do when I get to a gig now, I'll be completely honest, is I just open up the case. I go, yeah, I'll take that, 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 that. Boom, 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 boom. Done, drop, shut, go. And I just wing it and I take different stuff every single time but I instinctively know where everything is because I've been doing this so long. But when you first start, you don't want to have to think about anything other than performing. That's all you want to think about. You just want to think about performing. So if that's all you're going to be thinking about, the easy way to, uh, to not worry about anything else is by writing it all down. So one more example, uh, coins across with a shell. So you're going to need four coins in a shell. Now, how are you going to get those coins? Are you going to take them out of a purse? Or are you going to produce them? If you're going to produce them, are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. So where are you going to have the coins? Are you going to have them in your right-hand pocket? Okay, so is the shell going to be with them or is that going to affect the production? And if it is, where's the shell going to be? Okay, so the shell's going to be there and the four coins are going to be there. Okay, cool. So once you've produced the coins using whatever production that you want to do, how am I going to steal the shell? What's my motivation to go into my pocket? Well, if I took the coins out of a purse, I could put the purse away and get the shell. Okay, right, okay. Now, how are you going to end the routine? Are you going to end up with a jumbo coin? Where are you going to steal that jumbo coin from? Are you going to have a jumbo coin dropper? Are you going to have it coming out of your tra uh, out of your, your sleeve? Or are you going to have it go out of a pocket? It's going to be in a pocket, right? How do I get it from my pocket? What's the time and the routine that I get it? What's my justification to go into my pocket? Am I going to stop at a three-inch coin or am I going to also produce a five-inch coin? If I'm going to produce a five-inch coin, where's that going to be? It's going to be in my back pocket. Okay, so how am I going to produce that? And you think about all of this stuff and you really sit down and think about where every prop needs to be and you're going to end up with two pieces of paper and you'll have well you'll end up with your set list so you'll end up with four pieces of paper as I say refer, refer to the previous video if you want to look about set lists but you're going to have two pieces of paper with your set lists on you're going to have two pieces of paper with your uh, with your pockets on and you're going to have all the different stuff in all the different pockets written down now you have a you have a blueprint so when you go to a gig and you have your close-up case you don't jam it that you don't jam the close-up case full of absolutely everything that you've got because temptation will kick in oh i know that's not on my set list but i'll take that because i've been playing with that stop it no don't do that just take the stuff that you know you need for the set list that's why we spent time creating the set lists and now when you get to the gig you go right okay these are my set lists I'm doing walk around first of all. So this is the set list. This is what I need. This is the set list for the walk around. Right, that goes there, 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 and you're done. Now you don't have to worry about it. Now your pockets make sense. But it is important, and I cannot stress this enough, it's important to think this through. Think about how every routine affects every other routine. For example, are you going to do a vanishing deck? which a lot of people are going to do. You're going to do a vanishing deck, where at the end, the entire deck disappears. So if you're going to do that, you're going to ditch the pack of cards, right? Where are you going to ditch the pack of cards? Well, I'm left, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be holding the cards in left-hand dealing grip. I'm going to ditch the deck as I ask them for the card box. So as I ask them for the card box, I'm going to ditch the deck, right? Okay, so it's going to go in that pocket. But I've got a Rubik's Cube in that pocket. A Rubik's Cube, if I try and put a deck of cards in my pocket with a Rubik's Cube in it, I'm not going to be able to put my hand in there. It's going to look clumsy. Cards are going to go all over the floor. Right, okay, so that means I need to put the Rubik's Cube over there. But I'm doing a chop cup, and I've got a chop cup final load in there. Is the final load for the chop cup going to affect the, uh, the, the Rubik's Cube? Oh, yeah, it's probably going to affect the Rubik's Cube. Okay, well, what, uh, do you see what I'm trying to say? You have to think this stuff through. One trick... Think about how that trick plays out. You'll be surprised at how many times you have to go into a pocket. Let me give you one more example. If you do Intercessor, not Intercessor, that's Gate and Bloom, completely different thing. If you do Pocket Interchange, where you have the four aces go into your pockets and they change into four kings, lots of different versions of this. Gary Jones and Chris Congreves have something called Upper Hand. Obviously, you've got the original Pocket Interchange from, I think it was Gary Kurtz. You've got so many different versions. Alec Azam, Peter Nardi did a really good version a while ago. All different versions, but ultimately, all of these versions involve you putting cards into each pocket. Well, hang on a second. If you're going to plan on doing interchange and you're going to have four pockets, what, which pockets are you going to use for interchange? And if you're going to use these pockets and these pockets, well, hang on. You've got a Rubik's Cube here. You've got a chop cup there. You're not going to be able to put your hand in your pocket. 
because you're not going to have the stuff in the way. So are you going to use the trouser pockets? What have you got in your trouser pockets? It's the same with performing something like um, travellers, divergent travellers, where four aces get lost and they go into four different pockets. Well, how are you going to do that if you've got your pockets full of stuff? So how is the walk around? What's the workaround on that? Do you see the points I'm trying to make? You need to look at every single routine that you're doing, which is why you need set lists. Then you need to think about what you do during the course of the routine and which pockets you go into for every reason, whether it's ditching or something else. Then that will dictate what goes in what pocket and when. And then the final piece of advice I can give you is to practice this stuff. You don't just write your set lists down and then go to a gig for the first time and just fill your pockets full of stuff. You need to get used to this. And the best way to get used to this is by rehearsing. Stage magicians have a full dress rehearsal where they get fully dressed up in the, act, in the clothes that they're going to wear. They dress a stage exactly where it's meant to be. And then they rehearse the whole routine because that way, that's the best way to know where everything is. Because one of the big problems about performing on stage is forgetting where the props are. OK, this is here. OK, and you have to have a full dress rehearsal to work that out. Normally one more, more than one uh, full dress rehearsal. It's the same with close up. Work out what clothes you're wearing and dress appropriately, put that outfit on, put your tricks where you think they're gonna be, and perform every single set to yourself. Pretend there's a spectator in front of you and do the whole set. Hi, my name's Craig, I'm the magician here today. I'm not as dodgy as I look, ha 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 ha. Let me show you a trick with this spoon. Watch, blah, 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 and do the whole routine all the way through and make sure that it works like it's meant to. That's really, really important. Have a full dress rehearsal and work out and make sure everything works out. Don't just, by rehearsal, I don't just mean sit around in your jeans and your t-shirt and just practice tricks. I'm talking about if you're going out and performing, actually go and do a full dress rehearsal and perform every single set list and make sure there's no problems with where you've put each thing in each pocket. Very, very important. Okay, so the final piece of advice I can give you about pocket management is remember to put the props back in the same place that you got it from. I have seen so many magicians and they've worked out their pocket management and have done a trick with a pack of cards and they've very quickly just put the cards away in a different pocket. That screws everything up because then when you go over to the next table, you're going to look for your pack of cards. It's not going to be there. And you go, oh, here it is. And then you pull out a completely different deck and now you've shuffled your mem deck and everything's going completely beat on. You've got to remember, get yourself into the habit of putting things back where you got them from, which is why you want to go with stuff that's going to easily reset. OK, you want to remember where everything goes and you want to make sure that you put it back in that position after you perform the trick. It's, it's difficult, but it's a little bit like muscle memory. Muscle memory kicks in after a while and you just do it automatically. But until that muscle memory kicks in, you have to remember to put everything back. I remember losing a 3CM, a triple threat um, coin, which is $300. And I lost it because... I put it, I thought I put it back in the pocket after I performed it. I obviously didn't. And when I went back to the car to take all my stuff out, it wasn't there and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I was absolutely distraught. And uh, I learned a big lesson that day. And it's very important that you learn that. So make sure that you put everything back where you get it from. I've actually thought of one other piece of advice as well. And the final piece of advice I want to give you is... Think outside the box when it comes to pocket management. And what I mean by that is, are there tricks that you can do that don't require pocket space? If you want to take more tricks with you without cluttering up your pockets, you know, how can you do that? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples. So one example is elastic bands. If you have some elastic bands on your wrist, they're not taking any pocket space. They're just there on your hand. And now you can go into whatever elastic band routines that you want to. And you're not having to go into your pockets. Now, I know some people watching this, they go, oh, I don't like having elastic bands on your wrist. And that's fine. That's cool. No problem. I don't have a problem with it at all. Um, and most people that I know don't have a problem with it at all. But it is an exceptional example of something that you can carry around with you that you can do a lot of magic with that doesn't require you to go into any of the pockets. 
Socks. Another example of something like that would be Socks by Vanishing Ink and Michael Hoyt. Um, the thing, well, I mean, technically you are going to have to carry a packet trick wallet around with you, but you've got the revelation on your feet which is absolutely perfect. And I take a socks with me. I've got three sets of socks and I take them with me to gigs and I just make sure that I'm putting a clean pair of socks on every single time. And uh, socks, as you know from a video that I did on this channel very early on, socks is one of my go-to tricks. It's something that I do all of the time. I know I can go into my pocket and I can perform the routine anytime I want to. I've got the revelation and I can go over to the next table. So think about stuff that you can put in your set lists uh, routines that you can do that don't even require pockets. Socks and elastic bands is a perfect example, but there's a lot of other examples. Uh, I'll give you one more that just popped into my head. The Regal Ring Chain, which uh, I reviewed way back in the Wisdom Product Review, and I've done for years and years and years. In fact, I've just bought a new one off David because the old one got broken after like a decade. So, um, that's an example of a perfect example because I've just got a chain around my neck and I can go into uh, the routine and I can have the ring appear around my neck. Absolutely brilliant. Perfect. So think about routines that you can do that don't even require you using your pockets. So that's it. That is another magic stuff. That is everything I know about pocket management. All I can say to sum this up is pocket management is so important. When you start going out and you're performing close-up magic and you're going to paid gigs, it's really important that very, very quickly you figure out how to do pocket management to the best of your ability. Now I'm going to throw this over to you. Was this video useful? If it was, let me know in the comments down below. Have you got any tips that I missed? In which case, again, let people know down below in the comments and let me know what you think of the video. And one more time, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and I will be back tomorrow with a magic rant. So I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.